With the conquest of the Balkans, the Nazis had a solid front from the Black Sea to the Baltic. But the Russians had built themselves a buffer to take some of the steam out of the Nazi punch, no matter where it landed. But where would it land? When the blow came, it was from five different directions. And from the north, one extra, just for luck. That was the big day. A storm broke nearly 200 Axis divisions. More than two million men plunged into a front 2,000 miles long, reaching from the White Sea to the Black. Their aim, the annihilation of the Red Army in a decisive battle on the frontier. The offensive started along the whole length of the front. It was concentrated on three main objectives. Leningrad, Moscow, and Kiev, the capital of the Ukraine. In the first 30 days, von Lieb's forces drove to within 125 miles of Leningrad, while the Finns under Mannerheim, supported by the Germans, began a drive from the north to encircle the city. In the center, von Bock's army plunged 480 miles into Soviet territory. One Russian city after the other was overrun by the invaders. And on July 17th, they captured the first main objective, Smolensk, regarded as the key to Moscow. Simultaneously in the south, von Rundstedt's forces cut deep into the Ukraine. This was blitzkrieg at its best. The world gave Russia another six weeks, and the Germans issued a communique. The issue in the east has already been settled. Smolensk is the last halt on the road to Moscow. But then a strange thing happened. For the first time since the mighty German army started its career of blitz, smashing into submission one European country after the other, that same German army came up against a country that did not submit. Despite the fact that Hitler's army swept deeper and deeper into the Soviet Union, and by October the 15th stood practically within the shadows of the Kremlin, despite the fact that the Soviet government and all foreign missions were forced to move to Kribyshev, 700 miles to the east, despite Hitler's triumphant pronouncement, I can say that this enemy is already broken and will never rise again. Despite the fact that by December, 500,000 square miles of Russian territory, an area equal to the entire Middle Western United States, had fallen to the invaders. Yes, despite Russia's loss of her best agricultural areas, her most thoroughly developed industrial plants, millions of her people, thousands of her tanks and her planes, Despite everything, those six weeks had lengthened into nearly six months, and the dread Nazi blitz had spluttered, stumbled, and finally died. What had happened here? Let's try to analyze it. First, in this titanic struggle, not only two armies, but two fighting methods, 